Well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for this day. As, as we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming upon your church, what a blessed day it truly is. May we truly be filled with your spirit each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as I've mentioned several times, today is the day of Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit, is given to God's people. And you can look at that promise in the Gospels in which Jesus says that he's going to send the, the helper. We've talked about that the last couple of weeks, the helper to come and remind us daily and that he's got to go into heaven because if he goes into heaven, he's not going to be able to send the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts chapter 1, he tells us that he wants the disciples to stay in Jerusalem just for a little longer until that promised Holy Spirit comes. And now we celebrate that day, the day of Pentecost. And what a blessing it is to truly know that on that day, that's the Holy Spirit that was given to all the, the people of God during, on that first day of Pentecost was the same and still is the same Holy Spirit that's given to the church. It's the same Holy Spirit that's given to you and to me. What a blessing that truly is to be filled by the Spirit. But what I'd like to do today is look at the overall, what is Pentecost? Where did it come from? All right, so if you look at the word Pentecost, it's the word, it's the, it's a, it basically means 50. So where does 50 come from? Well, we take a look at the Old Testament. In the book of Leviticus, you have all these festivals. And this festival of weeks, which is another name for Pentecost, which is what we are celebrating during this time of season as well for Jewish people. Um, the, the festival of weeks, it says, from the day after the Sabbath, and what Sabbath are we talking about? The day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. The, 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 the first fruits of of the barley harvest, which we'll get to in a second, as you celebrate that day, that Sabbath, I want you to then count seven full weeks and then 50 days, count off 50 days up to the day of the seventh Sabbath and then you're gonna present and have these offerings given to the Lord. That's where the word 50 comes from. That's where we have Pentecost. And if you look at it, then it's 50 days after Easter, the actual Sabbath day before Easter. Because Sabbath day in the Old Testament is on Saturday. So as we look at that, 50 days after that Sabbath before Easter, now understand, they didn't celebrate Easter. Jewish people don't celebrate Easter. They, they don't believe in the New Testament. They, they only look at the Old Testament. So when you look at this, well, wait a minute, how's the 50 days after Easter when they didn't celebrate Easter? Because of the festival of weeks. And if you look at this festival, there's all sorts of offerings given, and I highlighted some, uh, all of them. You have the wave offering, you have the burnt offering, the grain offering, the drink offering, the fellowship offering. As they go through this ceremony, it is done in Hebrew. And over time, the Jewish people got separated out and started, most of them didn't speak Hebrew anymore. But the actual service by the priest was still done in Hebrew. I'll come back to that in a little bit. But what I'd like to do is, is take a look at just uh, more of the, there are three specific festivals that are given in the book of Leviticus. And those three festivals were the ones that the Jewish people were supposed to go and meet, the, the male Jewish people were supposed to come to Jerusalem and come together to celebrate these festivals. Well, the first festival that happens in the church year is Passover. It's also called the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the first fruits. And if you look on there, I put on there, it's the barley harvest. They come and they celebrate the first fruits of the barley harvest to give thanks to God. And if you look at the Passover, it's all about celebrating the, 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 when the, the Israelites were rescued out of slavery from Egypt. And so they come and they celebrate that during the Passover, but also celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a seven-day uh, feast during that time. And so why, you can go back to looking at Easter, why, why were all the Jewish people in Jerusalem during Holy Week? Because of the Feast of Weeks. Uh, or sorry, the Feast of the Passover, which was the first Feast of the, first, uh, the, the un Feast of the Unleavened Bread. And so they come together to, to celebrate that moment. And so therefore, as we just talked about, going back to that slide, that Saturday, that Sabbath, 50 days after that, you'd celebrate the next feast. And that feast is the Feast of Weeks, also called Pentecost because of the 50 days. And that is the celebration of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. 
And so they would come together and, 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 and celebrate that time. And so why are all the Jewish people in Jerusalem during the day of Pentecost? To celebrate the Feast of Weeks. And then the next feast that happens is called the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths, which they basically celebrate the wandering of, that the, of the Israelites in the wilderness. And so they would come together and they would create these little temporary structures, booths, tabernacles, that, these tents that they would stay in for that week to represent the hard times that occurred during the wandering in the wilderness, but also celebrate the fruitfulness, in this case, of olive and grape harvest, of the plentiful bounty that, that God promised in the promised land. And so that is the Feast of Tabernacles. And so... Now that you kind of have a little bit of background, you celebrate the Passover, which is the Feast of, of the Unleavened Bread. You have that. And then 50 days later, then you celebrate Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks. And then, and then later on, um, you celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles in the fall. So those three feasts were the ones that the Jewish people would celebrate. So now we have a little bit of understanding with that. Let's go to our reading for today. It says that when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. So when that 50 days after that feast uh, of the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, 50 days later, they came together. And this is really in Acts chapter uh, 2, this is where the disciples and the, the, uh, all the people that followed Jesus came together. And so a lot of people can look at it and go, well, it's just the 12 disciples. Well, at, at this, uh, in Acts chapter 2, we finally have 12 disciples again. Because if you go back to Acts chapter 1, it, they, they replaced Judas at the end of Acts chapter 1. And Right, you can also look at Acts chapter 1, and it says that Peter stood, stood up amongst all those people who believed, and he told them about, hey, this is, all these things had to happen. And then it says a little quote in there, in, a, in a, some parentheses, it says, there's about 120 people. So we can imagine and probably say that all 120 people received the Holy Spirit at this, on this day of Pentecost. So we have... At the day of Pentecost, when they were all gathered together in one place, suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house. It doesn't exactly say what house they were at. Maybe they were at the, 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 the um, synagogue. Maybe they were near it. We don't exactly know particularly where they were, but it really doesn't matter. They were close somewhere in Jerusalem, and as they were all gathered together, uh, suddenly, uh, a sound like a mighty w rushing wind came in. And then divided tongues as fire appeared on them and rested on each of them. Kind of describe this, kind of picture a, a moment that you just can't describe in words. You just can't put it in words. That was this moment. Luke, who's a doctor, really wanted to make sure he, he was able to describe this the best way he could, but he's trying to describe a situation that is indescribable. And we can get so caught up on, the, on how he described it, like Pentecost people can sit there, well, we gotta, we gotta speak in tongues, and we gotta do this, and we gotta do that, we gotta, and we get so wrapped up in, in the specific details instead of the understanding the overall truth. It's kind of like when I try to help my children. I, I, I say a few things to them. Here's the overall point that I'm trying to make, but they concentrate on all the little details that I messed up, and they picked on those things. But they forget the overall main point that I was trying to make. Does that happen with all the other parents as well? <laughs> so here it is. <laughs> Yes, Jill's pointing. Uh, we can get so stuck on those little details that we forget. This is a, a moment that it was just really indescribable. W what we need to understand from this is that this was definitely from God. If you look at a spirit, and, and uh, many times in the Old Testament, it can also refer to as wind. This wasn't in an ordinary wind. This was absolutely from God. That's really what Luke is trying to tell us. This was from God. This is not just some basic, simple thing that happened. No, no, it's from God. And then, yeah, there was something that came up and rested upon them. And, and tongues of fire and all that. Exactly, did it look like a tongue? I mean, it was probably just some kind of representation of God's presence. However, and we don't need to get caught up on that. We just need to know it's God's presence. And then it does say speaking in tongues. And, and as it says in speaking in tongues, most people would say, well, speaking in tongues means people are rattling off and they're saying it gibberish and you can't understand them and things like that. No, really, the, the word tongues there is, you can also translate it as languages. And we understand that more as we continue. They were able to now speak in all sorts of different languages. 
But looking at the fire part, we can go back. It should remind you of the very beginning of the Gospels, of John the Baptist. John the Baptist comes and he says that I baptize you with water, but, but soon enough Jesus is going to come, who I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. When you look at the Old Testament, God in many cases is, is in, represented by fire. And so really as we look at this description that, that Luke gives to us, we can understand simply it is God's presence amongst them and God's power that allows them to all of a sudden speak in all these different languages. And so we continue. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation. Now so think about it this way. I told you that the Jewish people were supposed to come, Jewish males, were supposed to come to Jerusalem for these three feasts. But over time, they started not to go to Jerusalem for those three feasts. Why? Because life happens, doesn't it? All right? So they started celebrating these feasts in their hometown. They just didn't really have the money to travel to Jerusalem. So the people that were able to travel were, well, those were the devout males. And so the devout males that did go to Jerusalem to celebrate this particular feast all right, they were all gathered together and they were from every nation under heaven. They got scattered because of the exile from the Old Testament and now they started speaking in a lot of different languages. They didn't speak Hebrew anymore and they didn't speak the, the typical language uh, of, of any one particular thing for Jewish people. It was all sorts of languages. So they all spoke in different language. So now as that multitude, as they hear this sound, this rushing wind of God coming in, they come out and they start hearing everybody speak to them and they're own language. All the words that Babs read there, all those people speaking all those different languages, now they hear the gospel in their own language. And now that, that's the important piece here. God's word is for all people. So they were able to speak in tongues in these different languages because God's word is meant to be spoken to everyone. And so, yes, they come out and they're like, wait a minute, how in the world are we hearing our, our own language from these particular people that are Galileans? Because, no offense, Galileans are not exactly the smartest people. They're not linguists. They're not, they're not scholars. So how in the world do these basic, simple Galileans, how are they able to, to speak all these different languages? They didn't buy Rosetta Stone and, and, and pay attention to that for the last couple days. No, they were just all of a sudden, boom, spoke it. And this wasn't gibberish. I mean, I, I can't say that I, I speak Spanish in any way, but can I do a little bit? Sure, but I can't do it fluently. This was fluent, and they knew everything and spoke it. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. And why were they able to do that? Because God's word is for all people to understand in every single language. And that's the point of what's going on on this particular day. Now, I will, I will say, if we go back to numbers, this, is, this isn't like a lot of people, well, this is the first time the Holy Spirit was given to people. No, okay? If you go back to the book of Numbers, and the Holy Spirit was involved in many things in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, Moses is, is together with his 70 elders. They're in a tent, and as they're in the tent, the Holy Spirit comes upon those 70 people, and they were all able to start prophesying. Well, outside the camp, there's these two other people that are outside the camp and the Holy Spirit comes on them and they start prophesying. And so Joshua comes running into Moses in the tent going, hey, you need to stop it because they're not part of this special group. They're outside here. And Moses is like, what are you doing? Man, I can't wait. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing my own words. Here. I can't wait till God sends his Holy Spirit to every person. Well, why are you jealous for me? Why, why is it? It's not about me. Uh, good for them that they're able to prophesy. Good for them that the Holy Spirit came upon them. Man, I can't wait till the day the Holy Spirit is given to everybody. That's what this day is all about. The day of Pentecost is the day that the Holy Spirit is given to everybody. Now, the problem is, is are you filled with the Spirit or are you filled with something else? Because we can look and continue to, to look at the, uh, what's going on in the, in the situation. A lot of people are really, wow, this is a special moment. This is cool. But there are some other people like, huh, they're just drunk. They are filled with wine. You see, there are people that aren't filled by the Spirit that are out in the world are trying to think that they are filled by something that is better and, and more accurate, and that's not the case. If you're not filled by the Spirit, if you're filled by 
wine or the earth, uh, the, the ways of the world and the sinful ways you're being devoured by that devil. And, and he's got you in his mouth. And, and, and he is now, you're thinking that he is the correct thing to be filled by and it's not. So what are we truly filled by? Because that's the problem in our life. We have the Holy Spirit. There it is right there for you. But yet, so many times we push it aside and think my way is better. I know better than you, God, and so I'm gonna do it my way and I'm filled by something else and I think that filling of something else is actually going to make me happier. It's gonna make me better. It's gonna do it. And it doesn't. It just makes me more empty and makes things worse. But then we justify and say, and say we gotta get out of that line of thinking. Whoa. And back into what God has done for us and be filled by his spirit. That's why Jesus tells us in uh, John chapter 17 in our gospel reading for today, he tells us, and it says on the last day of the feast, that feast would be the Feast of Tabernacles. So Jesus celebrated those feasts. He was doing his missionary journey for three years, right? So he celebrated this feast during this time. So that as they're doing that Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, which is again celebrating the promised land, Jesus basically s steps up and, and is almost like, um, and if, if you know your Christian music, Toby Mac sings that, I am, I am, that, that Jesus is the promised land. And so Jesus is like standing up going, I'm the promised land. Those who thirst, let them come to me and you'll be filled with living water. Just like the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And he said this about the spirit who now comes upon the church, comes upon all of us. We need to be filled by that. And so as we look at this day of Pentecost, I truly pray that you are filled by the spirit, that we don't get lost in the, in the specifics and the details and, and uh, twisting things around because you can look in it as we were discussing earlier, people can get lost with the way they describe stuff, right? And so as you look at that, don't be filled with what you think, what the world would think, giving into those, no, no, be filled by the spirit and understand his truth. And so truly today, to put it in a simple fashion, this is the day of Pentecost. And that, instead of using my own words, these are words that are straight from the Lutheran Study Bible. If you look at the Lutheran Study Bible down at the end, um, uh, on the bottom part, they give you the, the, the notes about the particular passages. And this is taken straight from the Lutheran Study Bible on this part of the book of Acts. It says, rather than blindly seeking other after ecstatic experiences, all these worldly experiences and joyful things of the world that thinks, you know, these desires of that. No, instead of doing that, put your focus where the Spirit puts His focus in the book of Acts. The ministry of God's Word and the service to one another. That's what it means to be filled by the Spirit. Through the Word, the Spirit will edify and build the church. Through the word, he will bring others to the saving knowledge of Christ. Through the word, he will bless and comfort you as you live by the gospel, full of God's spirit. Turn to God's promise of renewal and baptism through daily repentance. Then filled with peace through Christ, turn with joy to the people around you, no matter who they are or where they come from, and bear witness to them of the renewal you have received in Christ. So I pray that we understand that today, the day of Pentecost, is the day the Holy Spirit is given to you. Use it and be filled by his spirit to go share that gospel to others. No matter who they are, no matter what circumstance they are in, go and share that gospel with others so that they can also understand the true blessings of what Jesus has done for them. In the holy and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.